In this video, we're going to learn how to test if the player is grounded. Being grounded means the player is touching the ground, which is essential for a platformer in order to test if the player should be able to jump. We're going to cover three ways of doing that test, and in the end we will choose which one is best. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So here is my player character, I can move him left and right. And I have also implemented jump with the space key, so when I press space, I can indeed jump. So this seems correct, however, if I spam the space key, just like that, all of a sudden I can fly. So we need to make sure that we can only jump when the character is actually touching the ground. So let's see how the code is set up. Here is the player class. It's pretty simple. All we're doing is doing some input tests. So here on the fixed update, we are doing our handle movement. If the left arrow is down, we set the velocity to move to the left. If the right arrow, move to the right. If none of them, we stop. And here, if we press space, we got our jump velocity, which modifies the velocity pointing up. So what happens is every time we press space, we are doing this, which is going to make him jump. So it's in here that we need to check if the player is touching the ground before we do the actual jump. So let's make our function to test if the player is grounded. So down here, we make a private bool, since this will be a question, and we're going to call this is grounded. As I said, we're going to test out three different methods. So let's start off with the simplest one, which will be just a simple raycast. Now a raycast, in case you don't know, is just a line going from point A to point B, and the physics system tests if that line hits any colliders. So we do a physics2d.raycast. So as you can see, we need an origin, a direction, and a distance. So for the origin, it will be the center of our collider. So we go into our box collider reference and we grab the bounds.center of our box collider. Okay. For direction, we want to point down, so a simple vector 2 dot down. And finally, for the distance, since the origin is at the center of our box collider, we can use half the height of the collider as our distance. So we go into the box collider, go into the bounds. And half the total height is exactly what is stored on the collider.extents. So we can just use the extents.y and that's our total distance. So we have a line going from the center pointing down by half the height, which perfectly matches the bottom of the collider. However, being that mathematically perfect could cause some issues, so let's add a little extra. So in here, a extra height test. Let's just put a very small amount, just enough so that it tests right outside of the player collider. So in here we test by that distance plus that, okay. All right, so all of this might seem complex, but it's really very simple. All we're doing is a simple test from point A to point B, where point A is the center of our box collider and point B is the very bottom. Now all we need is for this function to return whether the player is grounded or not. So we are grounded if the raycast hits something and we are not if the raycast hit nothing. Now we can visualize the raycast with a simple debug.drawArray. This takes a start point and a direction. So the start will be the origin of our ray. So let's use this. The direction also contains the distance. So we simply take vector 2 dot down and then we multiply by our distance and that's our ray. Then we can also add a color. So let's add different colors to test if we are rounded or not. So in here we define a color for the ray color. And if we hit something, we want the ray to be in green. If not, we want it to be in red. So to get the result of this raycast, as you can see, it returns a raycast hit 2D. So raycast hit 2D. And we know if we hit something, if the raycast C dot collider, if it is different from null, then that means we have hit something. So if we hit something, let's put the ray color with color.green. So we see green if we are grounded, and if not, let's put the ray color as color.red. And finally, at the end, from this function, we return if we are grounded, so we just do a return if the raycast hit collider is different from null. Okay, so again, what we are doing here is doing a raycast, 
and then drawing a ray to make sure that we see the result of our raycast. So all that's left is to go up here into our jump code and we're only going to jump if we press the spacebar and our character is grounded. Okay, let's test. Okay, so here we are. Now, first of all, in order to be able to see our debug ray, we need to go up here and enable gizmos. And there you go, you can now see the ray, it's going from the center of the character, pointing straight down and going outside by just a tiny bit. You can see that it's in green since our character is indeed grounded. And if I jump, and as you can see, we have an error. The color is still green, which means we are still grounded. So if I spam space, we can still jump. So this isn't working exactly as intended. So let's see what's happening. To identify the issue, let's go into our isGrounded function. And down here, let's do a debug.log of the raycasted collider so we can test to see what our raycast is hitting. Let's test. And yep, right here on the console, you can already see exactly what the issue is. The issue is that the raycast is hitting the player box collider instead of hitting the platform. Now we obviously want to ignore the player from the ground check, so let's fix that. One extra parameter we can use in our raycast is the use of a layer mask, which means we can test to make sure that our raycast only hits on certain layers. So let's use layers to identify which ones are our platforms. So here in the editor, select a platform, go in here to the layer and add a new layer. Now in here, let's add a layer for the platforms. Then we go back into the transfer, select all of the platforms and set them all to the platforms layer. Okay, so now we have a layer that we want to collide with. So now let's go back into our code. And here we need to know the layer mask so we can go up here and use something very useful from Unity. First add a serialized field so we can set it in the editor for a private and now we can use a layer mask. Let's call this the platform layer mask. So let's see in the editor how that looks. Here is the player script and here is the platform layer mask. And as you can see, we can select from the various layers. And in this case, we're only going to select the platforms layer. And yep, there you go, only that one. Okay, now back into the code. So down here, we can now pass the platform layer mask as our layer mask. So that means that this raycast will only collide with objects that are on this layer. So let's test again. So here we are, and indeed you can see on the console that we are not hitting the player, but rather we are hitting the platform. So now we can try to jump. And yep, there you go, the ray turned into red, and as you can see, the console suddenly turned into null since there is no hit while he's jumping. Okay, awesome, so far so good. So this is the first method for testing if our character is ground. Now we do have several potential issues with this method. The first issue we have is with regards to slopes. So here on the left side, I have a slope platform, and if I go to it, and yep, you can see that the isGrounded function is now returning false. The reason why is because the player is touching the ground, but only on this corner of his box collider. So we can pause this, select the player so we can visually see the box collider, and yep, there you go. So you can see that the box collider is hitting right here on the corner, but our raycast is not going far enough in order to actually collide with the platform. Since we're doing the raycast in the center, we aren't doing enough extra distance in order to account for the slope. So one solution to this is to simply increase the extra distance check. So if you know the maximum slope, this would be a potential fix. So in here, let's put the extra high test, let's say at five. Let's test again. And as you can see, the ray is now much longer. And now if we go into the slope, we can indeed correctly identify that we are still theoretically grounded. So this is one potential solution. However, let's see how we still have one issue. Over here on the right is an edge, so we can jump into it, go into the edge, and I can still jump up here, perfectly fine, everything works, I can spam and only jump when I'm down there, okay. However, if I stand right on the edge, there you go, there's the red ray again, and we are no longer grounded, despite the fact that, as you can see, the box and ladder is indeed correctly interacting with the platform. So the issue, once again, is due to the limitations of doing just one ray cast, which since the raycast is in the center, it is not accounting for when we are only holding on from the edge. So this brings us into our second method for detecting ground, which is the boxcast. Here in the code, the boxcast is extremely simple to change. In the physics 2D class, we have the raycast, which tests with a ray, and we also have a very simple boxcast, which tests with a box. 
Essentially, imagine a virtual box collider being moved in a certain direction. So in here, the first parameter is exactly the same, which is our origin. However, then instead of having direction, we have the size. So for the size of our box, we can simply go into the box collider 2 dbounce.size. Then we need an angle, which in this case, we don't want the testing box to be rotated at all. So we'll leave it at zero. Then we need a direction, which is indeed the same vector to point down. And now for the distance, since we are moving a box, we don't need the large enough distance to account for slopes. So we can simply go by distance of the extra height test. And finally, we have the layer mask, which is the same as the platform layer mask. So now the extra height test can be relatively small. Okay, so that's it for switching from a raycast into a boxcast. Now down here, in order to see what our code is doing, instead of a ray, we need four rays to draw the box. Okay, so here we have our three rays, only three since we don't actually care about the top ray. So let's do our test and see what things look like. Okay, here we are, and as you can see, this is our virtual box. It is correctly hitting the floor, and if I jump, there you go, it turns into red, and it plays the animation, so if I spam, it doesn't work. Okay, great. Here we can go into the slope, and as you can see, it works perfectly fine since we are using a raycast, so we are correctly hitting right at the corner there. So the slopes work. And finally, let's go and see the problem that we had with the edge, so all the way down here. And if we go, if we stand right on the edge, there you go, everything still works. We can still jump even though we are right on the edge. So as you can see, this is working in every possible scenario. So this method is the one I would suggest you use for making your own platform. However, just for educational purposes, I will cover one last method. And this last method might seem like the best way for beginners since it's more visual, but if you made it this far in the video, I'm hoping you fully understand that the box collider is without a doubt the superior method. So with the last method, we're going to essentially just use a second hitbox. So here we have our player character. And inside, let's make another empty game object. This will be our ground check. In here we had a box collider and it is pretty much the same except shifted down. So as you can see, one of them, the one on top, is the player box collider and the bottom one is the ground check. In here, let's make this a trigger so it doesn't collide with our physics. Okay, now let's make a script for it. So we go in here, create a new C-sharp script. This will be our ground check. Let's drag it onto our ground check game object. Now here in the code, we can access the collision functions. So we go into a private void on trigger stay 2D. So this function gets called whenever the collider is hitting something. So in here, we just need to do a simple test. So we grab a Boolean call it is grounded and it simply becomes true if the collider is not null. So in here we do a public bool is grounded. However, the code just like this will have the same issue of colliding with the player. So in here, we also make a serialized field for the private layer mask, for the platform layer mask. So if the collider is not known and the collider matches the platform layer mask, then we're going to be grounded. And finally, we also need a private void on trigger exit 2D, set the is grounded back into false. Okay, that should do it. And here on the is grounded function, for the time being, let's comment out this code. And instead, we're going to grab the ground check component from the child. So we do transform.find our ground check transform. Then we get the component for the ground check. And we simply return the is grounded boolean. So return that. Okay, so this is our third method, and let's see if it works. Okay, so let's see, here we are, and if I jump, there you go, the jump still works perfectly fine, and I cannot spam, okay, good. If I go into the side, let's see the slopes, and yep, the slope is working perfectly fine, I can jump, and I stop, okay. And finally for the edge, 
if we go all the way down here, down to the edge, and everything still works fine. So the reason why beginners might do this method is because it seems simple since you can clearly see the first and the second voxel letter and the code is pretty much only a few lines, whereas the boxcast code seems somewhat more complicated. But I hope this video clearly explained how raycasts work and how the boxcast works, so you should be able to fully understand the boxcast and why it is the superior method. So just like that we have three methods for testing if the player is grounded. This is essential for any platformer in order to test if the player should be able to jump. This video covered three methods, but for most cases you should stick with the boxcast method. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from UntyCodeMonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more UNT tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.